you know, and a lot of it had to do with in, um, budget and how expensive it is to, to do something that's, you know, really sculptural. And I think um, in the end, there were some things that we felt that as a group we felt very strongly about, like the paving materials and the seating materials. The bike racks, um, in the end, were intended to be something that's very simple. These are the bike racks that um, are, for instance, in uh, Northwestern University. They're just very simple U racks. They're really easy to lock your bikes to. They have a very narrow gauge as compared to the ones that are out there today, so they're easier for, for bikers to chain up to. Um, we also um, looked at a simplified trash receptacle and, and lighted bollard. So this would provide some mood type lighting in that open lawn area. Mm -hmm. uh, the paving, there's a couple of different types of paving. So the blue stone that's out there today in the ellipse garden on the screen right there, um, you know, we wanted to try and um, incorporate as many materials from that into the rest of the campus. So in the garden path that's along Loma Avenue would be sort of an irregular type of a pattern like this, but in the great lawn would be uh, a more regular pattern like this. Uh, we talked about seating. Uh, one of the, the things, the other thing that we talked at length about were, was this butterfly garden. And as you know, in the winter time and this time of year, butterfly gardens don't look like this. They, they, you know, they go dormant, and so it looks you know, like a, a garden that's waiting to happen. And so one of the recommendations that we had made in the concept plan was to incorporate um, some sculptural elements. And so that's what these maize trees are. Um, they would be spaced um, you know, in, in between the butterfly garden areas, and it could be a place to hang birdhouses or to hang art on. But it was intended to provide some interest especially for this time of year when we don't have flowering plantings. So are the maize trees real trees? Oh. They are real trees that have died, and okay. so they're preserved, and then they get set into a foundation. Yeah. This is a photograph from Maggie Daly Park. Yeah, the, the, yeah. but the scale of this is obviously pretty different pretty from small. the scale we have. We would have smaller ones, and yeah. if you want to get a test of yeah. scale, so these, these little black dots are intended to represent the maize tree. So they would be sort of speckled sporadically throughout the butterfly garden, just to provide some sculptural Through interest. In the butterfly natural. garden? Yes. Uh, okay. Since this was sort of a hot topic, it was pulled out into a bit alternate right. category because, right. um, mm -hmm. you know, it, we understand it's um, it might be a little bit different. It is different, but it's also. Um, right something that uh, some members did like, so we, we have it in there. Is there any upkeep for them? Are they pretty, how long do they last? They, they, they last. I mean, there, there really is not much that needs to be done. If they get anchored in the ground properly, okay. Water resistant? And the plants in terms of, are most of the plants you chose drought resistant? Yeah, well, so they're native. Okay. plantings and where they are exposed to de-icing salts they're tolerant of that and then the other thing that I will mention is that um, the plant materials in the butterfly garden today are really tall and we want to make sure that especially little ones feel comfortable walking next to them so next to a path a standard that we always use is that next to a path for three feet over nothing should be more than three feet tall mm -hmm. so there are some select places where we can have something taller but the rest of that really should be low and friendly that you can see an interpretive sign, you can kind of feel welcomed into the space. Uh, signage, so, you know, an example of an interpretive sign could look like that, and then um, that welcome masonry planter sign at the corner, uh, and then could look something like this. We've got some options of what that could look like. Yeah, thank you for doing that. Mm -hmm. that's yeah, that's cool. That's great. So before I get into that, I should pass this around. This is the photograph looking, I'll just have to get it passed around. Yeah, sure. So looking from the intersection of Park and Walnut Avenue today, from the same spot. So if you're at the corner going eastbound, there's a pretty big crabapple tree in the <laughs> way. <laughs> and it's um, also tough to read the signage um, because there isn't a whole lot of high contrast between the lettering and the brick. It's a really attractive building. So what we've done is, you know, with the guidance of the committee, the committee had some thoughts about different types of science scenarios. And so we're interested to know your thoughts, not that you have to decide tonight. But there's a couple of ways that we thought we could highlight the logo and make the library really feel like a welcoming entrance from this major intersection as people are entering downtown. So. 
Um, again, this is that planter that I mentioned, and there would be that curved bench on the back side. So this, this one shows uh, Walnut Public Library channelized lettering with a logo and then a bigger logo back here. You'll see we've scratched out the tree. <laughs> yeah. And then this one uh, keeps the masonry wall just plain, but the logo plus the lettering on the building. Uh, and then this one splits it, so the logo on the building only, and then the channelized lettering on the wall. Only. So, so it's, go ahead. Is the middle one using the existing oh, lettering? That's, that's me as uh, new lettering that has a darker color yeah, to the lettering. Yeah, to the logo here. Logo yeah, here. I, think I feel like it's a really baseball good. game. Yeah. Which one do you want to root for? It was great to visualize it, to do what you did to create yeah. the visuals. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. say, your logo is so attractive. Yeah. I mean, it, it's like the logo yeah. and everything that you all have done to the interior is sort of... It's just really inspiring. And yeah. You want to kind of bring that out. I think. I mean, I think. And I think A does. I mean, personally, I think the A does the best job. But I don't know how everybody else feels. But that's. Yeah. I do A or C. I, I love having the sign on the back of the bench. That's. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Right. <laughs> it right. does look a little bit bare. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you know, I mean, I will say too. I mean, we didn't mock this up this way, but if we decided that we wanted this, mm -hmm. I would probably suggest bringing the height of this down. Mm -hmm. So that was all low. Just something to think about. So the print would be low, or so. <coughs> it would oh, have any. She's saying if you didn't put if the letters on at all. This one oh, that has no oh, lettering. We I got you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. to have it so tall. Yeah. I, I mean, I think it's awesome having the oh, name on the right mm -hmm. by the curb. Looks like beautiful. Uh -huh. yeah. It's a really nice design. Does it change the lighting at all? Or I mean, there's a, and there's like, it seems like there's like a, there's like, like a glow in, in the photo. So I'm not sure. Is there lighting that would go to illuminate the words if they're there versus not there? Sure. I think it should be uplit from the landscape. Okay. Yeah. So is there a bigger expense if we do put letters on that planter versus do the version B? Um, there would be a larger expense in bringing electrical out to this. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Any idea of like ballpark how much more like is I don't know. It's you know, uh, gosh. For, for, okay. we'll, we'll see it later. I can yeah. tell you. I, that's, I yeah. couldn't tell you. I'm no, that's fine. We'll see. Head. We'll see it. We'll see it when it comes. Yeah. Because okay. what you put in there was just general price. Right. Right. Yeah. right. So um, this information it. came or this guidance came out of the recent last spring committee, and so we um, did not we did not price the signage uh, with lighting for the. I know this is off topic again, and I should stop indulging myself, but is it on Met where that fire hydrant is? Like, you can't you can't park there, right? There, I parked there tonight. So there's one parking space, or maybe it's two. There's two. There's two. Yeah, there's the fire hydrants here, but this parking is, like, way over here. Yeah. Right. And bus stop is here. By the way, I we reached out to Pace. I yeah. should mention this to you because... The Pace bus shelter, as you know, is pretty awkward and tight the way that it is over there today. And so we reached out to them to understand um, what their future plans were. So the bus shelter is here today. Um, we've been notified by Pace that they're planning on reducing service in this area. So um, we decided as a group not to proceed with potentials for upgrading the structure or anything like that because... I got an update on that, too. I. I uh... Uh, talk to Pace too. So the apparently is um, it's Route 421 or whatever. Yeah. Um, so um, they intend to have service permanently at that bus shelter because the trips to Loyola are so popular. So there will always be service there. Um, it's conceivable that in 2020 that they might um, like. Uh, 420 may have like a few like a dip in front of the library instead of going um, I guess on lake or whatever so um, I think there are six trips each direction today and the most popular ones are the school routes and so um, their view is it will, there will always be service to the library um, so um, it just may not be in the current route configuration uh, There's service, but nobody ever gets off. So I ride that 420, 421. Yeah. So uh, generally, they're going to school and they're. Right. Right. right, they are reducing the line, though. Metro and Dale. they told us they yeah. weren't willing to pay to have the shelter. Alter, yeah. Right. Yeah, no, I, I think, yeah. you know, for us, I think we, you know, may not be this one, but I think, you know, 
uh, we should think about uh, fixing up the shelter because I think that shelter will always be there. And if it's if it's on our property, I, I think we should consider it. If it's not part of this fine, it's, it's fine. It's, it's city property. property. It's, not, it's city yeah. property, yeah. Yeah. and no one uses it. Right, so we can't, you know, we can't, we don't have no access to it. I mean, I we can't modify it. Yeah, yeah. I can yeah. share a little bit more. I, in, yeah. Earlier on in the process, um, you know, if, if, if the library wanted to have, was willing to allow the shelter to go on to library property, there was a requirement to add advertising. There is a city, a village code that says that no off-site signage is, per, is permitted in the village. So we're sort of at a stalemate there. Right. But um, but then when we learned that they were reducing service, it sort of felt like it was really not an issue that the library mm -hmm. staff or committee wanted to pursue. Any other? Yes, Thank we you have want a to couple share more. Keep going. Yeah. So, so these are just some okay. renderings um, that show what that great lawn space could look like. So. Um, this is standing in the middle of, I keep calling it the Great Lawn, Open Lawn. It's great, it's just not fair. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so this is that bluestone paving that goes around the perimeter. Mm -hmm. These are those, you know, sculptural pebble seats. The sculpture is relocated here, sort of welcoming you as you come into the library. Um, this shows the logo, um, one of the chairs. <clears throat> and then... The other one, I didn't really spend much time looking, talking about this in front of you because it's easier to look at it from here. But this is a view looking from uh, the parking lot. So if, if you're entering the library from the parking lot and you're here and you're coming up this way, this is a view looking in that direction. Uh, the, the group felt like there were opportunities, especially on this side of the building, where these spaces are painted sort of a beige color today that we can pick up off of the colors of the logo, incorporate some fabric banners, um, and then new plantings at the garden area, um, and also a secondary sort of smaller monument sign to bring people into the library. And then again, it's sort of an, an, an added potential for later <coughs> opportunities for some trellis uh, panels and some plantings. This is in the background, but you'll know you probably are aware if you've walked this walk before that there is a, a vent grate that's not functioning today in that area. Um, yeah. Since we understand it doesn't function, that could be replaced with just a very simple concrete pad and another bench just to kind of keep it safe. It's there's a little bit of a grade change, so we want to fix that and make that nice and clean. This diagram represents the way that the costs were calculated. Um, so in the back of your packets are the the boiler, the, um, the project budgets. And we organized the budgets based on whether um, items were in the public right of way, which is basically Homewood Avenue and Park between the sidewalk and the curb. So these areas are, are publicly controlled and then the private property areas. And it, it was just a method for us to calculate, but we do a lot of public work, and so we have um, <coughs> costs that we keep track of, what uh, you, you typical unit costs are for things like concrete and bluestone and earthwork and grading and, and all that fun stuff. And so we've applied the standard costs that we keep in our office to these areas that I just described here, and so that's where we sort of come to um, these items here. You'll see at the, at the bottom of each of these charts, there is a couple of contingencies put in here. Um, the 10% contingency is for final design and permitting. Um, the village would need to see more refined drawings in order to permit these things. Um, and then the 15% contingency on top of that is for construction phase type services. So that would be construction phase design services, um, also, uh, uh, a contingency in the event that something happens that is just not predicted. Sometimes you don't know what you're going to find when you start digging, although we think we know because you've already been digging uh, with your geothermal. So um, so those are, those are the first two charts. And then the very last page are what the group talked about as far as bid alternates. So bid alternates means that these are things that um, we could direct the contractor to price these out as separate items for the library's consideration later. So we talked about um, the things like the wall, tre the trellis wall panels, um, fabric banners, the other facade elements. Um, the other thing we didn't really discuss yet was the snow melt system. So mm -hmm. we had a lot of great discussions about snow melt, and it, I'm sure everybody's familiar. But what that means is that there's heating coils in the 
just in the sidewalk area, so just the beige areas that are within the library property. So it's it's this space, it's this walk, and this walk. And of course, that means that this would have to be reconstructed. Um, but the snow melt system could be installed in these areas, and that would mean we would not need to shovel snow or put salt on. And it would be, um, you know, a nice luxury to have. Uh, we did go out and get a bid. And um, we found that it um, wasn't as expensive as we thought it might be. So, um, you know, that plus the engineering to, to do it is, you know, is, is shown here. So that was um, one other item. And then the other items that we talked about were uh, the sculptural maze trees, which we talked about earlier. And then this garden walk area. We had priced mm -hmm. this garden walk as part of the base price as a concrete walk. Um, if we were to consider it to be bluestone, as is shown in the rendering, then um, there would be an additional cost for the stone. So with the snow melt system, up to how many inches does it control? If, if there's a mass of snow, yeah. does it, it melt it, or is there a limit, and then what's the general life of it? So uh, that is a good question as far as how fast, I mean, can, can snow can snow fall faster than it can heat the sidewalk? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Probably. But only 